Next, NASA says its Voyager 1 probe, the most distant human-made object in the universe, is sending usable information to Earth again after months of spouting gibberish. The spaceship left the solar system in 2012 and is currently more than 15 billion miles from Earth. Well, Dr Jennifer Millard is an astronomer at Fifth Star Labs, joining us from Barry in Wales. Thank you very much for coming on the programme. Yeah, very happy to. I'm glad it's good news. It is good news. So talk us through, first of all, I suppose, what was going wrong? So this all began way back in November when, as you say, the craft just wasn't sending back anything that we could unravel back on Earth. It was all nonsense. And it seems to be a hardware problem. One of the chips on board and part of the flight data subsystem, so one of the computers on board, has broken. And, you know, it's not surprising for something that's four and a half decades old and has been operating for nearly three and a half decades longer than it should have. So it means that the code that was in this chip wasn't working properly and so now this code has been transferred to different chips on board and so now we can start getting some sensible data back from this probe at the minute it's just engineering and health data but soon right. they're going to move some more software around and we should get lovely science data back I mean, it's it's there's so much to go through there that is an incredible thing firstly this this process of basically repairing something so far away in kind of simple terms talk us through how did they do this repair exactly so it's not a physical repair of course you know we can't get to the probe and swap out the old chip and put a new chip in so we've had to kind of be a little bit clever nasa have had to instead of using this particular part of the microchip part of the computer to operate the commands that operate the software they're using different parts of the chip in order to, to use that software they've essentially kind of turned this little bit of the chip off ignore that little bit of the computer and use different parts of I the see. computer instead Okay, right. Now let's get a bit more on what on earth it is sending back. What kind of information is it beaming all the way back to earth? So at the minute, it's what we call health and engineering data. So it's, you know, is everything else working? Is the probe where we think it is in space? Is it pointing in the right direction? Things like that. It's no science data yet, but they're confident that all of the instruments are still working. It's just a case now that we need different software to go onto different parts of the chip in order to access that science data again. So they're going to repeat the process. It's going to take some time because it takes an awful long time to talk to Voyager. It takes <laughs> 22 and a half hours to send a message and then 22 and a half hours to get one back. But soon then we should be getting some lovely science data. Interesting. And, and where's it going? Well, it's just going out into our galaxy, towards the heart of our galaxy. It's just sailing now in the space between the stars. And this is why we want Voyager to keep on going. So Voyager 1 and, of course, Voyager 2. It's probing the space between the stars. No other craft have been able to do this. And it's going to be many decades before we get another craft to have a look at what's going on beyond the sun's influence. And you've already mentioned it's going on 40 plus years or whatever, a lot longer than it was ever supposed to. How long can it keep going? It all depends how much power is left on board. So they're powered by radioactive decay, the Voyager probes. And over time, there's just less and less of that fuel on board. At the minute, the expectations are at least into next year, but soon there's just not going to be enough power to run the science instruments. And eventually they will fall quiet. But their mission won't end there because on board they have golden disks and there are notes in 55 different languages, greetings in 55 different languages, sounds of Earth, there are images as well and they'll just continue to sail around our galaxy and who knows, maybe some advanced civilization will one day bump into our probes and they'll get a little glimpse of life on Earth. It's absolutely extraordinary. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the programme and talking us through it. Jennifer Miller, Jolchenval, thank you. Thanks for having me.